and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Now we're bringing you another exclusive this week. Compact SUVs seem to be the next big thing, especially after the phenomenal success of the Renault Duster. There's a big buzz about this segment. Well, Mahindra all set to capitalize on that with their shortened version of the Xylo called the Quanto. Now, to qualify for a compact SUV, one really has to be under the 4 meter mark. The first one there was the Premier Rio. Mahindra is now stepping into that space. Not only is it under the 4 meter mark, it's also got a 1.5 litre engine as well, which means you get a whole load of excise benefits, meaning you can expect a great price point. But with this reduced power and compact dimensions, will it really do the job is what we want to find out. The Quanto's looks are really no surprise as pictures have been floating around on the net for a long while. There's no doubt that it's a shortened version of the Xylo. The front is all too familiar, the raised headlights are there and the bumper looks identical too. Closer inspection reveals a new lip above the toothed front grille as well as a more defined V on the bonnet. The large windshield remains unchanged but where the 8-pillar spoils the Xylo's MPV silhouette, it works well to give the Quanto its SUV stance. In fact, the Quanto looks pretty decent and nowhere as gawky as the Xylo. Although it has carried the top-heavy look and the smaller 15-inch wheels only help accentuate that. The Quanto has been given smaller wheels to open up more space on the inside. Coming to the rear, it looks a little abrupt and definitely as if it has been chopped. As part of the alteration, the Quanto gets the D-pillars different to the Xylos. Finished in black, they house the neat-looking wraparound tail lamps and also get horizontal strakes on the upper portion for added style. The side-opening tailgate on the Quanto comes mounted with a partially covered spare wheel. The spare wheel is not considered when measuring the length of the car so the 3985mm length you'll find in the brochures is only up to the rear bumper. Open the rear tailgate and you get a reasonably large boot with two drop-down seats for extra passengers. So in effect, the Quanto is a seven-seater. Although when we tried them out, we realized the seats are best for small kids only. Now despite being a compact vehicle, it's still pretty high, which means to get inside I have to use the footboard and clamber up into the Quanto. And once on the inside, I could almost feel like I'm in the Xylo because there's so much carried over from there onto this interior. Although I do have to say that quality looks like it's improved. The dashboard is a straight lift from the Xylo, but it comes finished in a lighter beige plastic here. Quality looks improved, but there are still bits like the front door pockets that look crudely finished and the panel fit in the region of the steering column that's particularly poor. The aircon knobs are carried over from the Xylo and don't feel special either. There's more parts sharing on the instrument cluster and the reading lamps. However, the digital drive assist system atop the centre console is simpler than that of the Xylo. It still displays important information like distance to empty and average fuel economy. The top spec Quanto C8 we drove also comes with power windows, two airbags, music player with MP3 and AUX connectivity and a reverse parking sensor. There are no steering mounted audio controls. From the inside, the driving position is great. The steering adjusts for rake and the driver's seat comes with a height adjust and a lumbar adjust. The footwell is spacious too. There's ample room for the largest of occupants and the foldable armrests add to the comfort factor. There's so much of space on the inside that it's hard to believe that the Quanto is actually a shortened Xylo. It's only when you park it you realize how conveniently compact this one is. Start the Quanto up and you're pretty amazed by it because you expect you know, to be shaken up and rattled by a three-cylinder engine. But it's amazingly refined. It's pretty quiet and it's only when you push a little harder around the 4000 rpm mark that it gets a little trummy but it's still pretty refined for a three-cylinder engine. Refinement is pretty impressive on this three-cylinder engine. 
and this is a new small capacity engine from MNM. Being 1.5 liters, it qualifies for the excise benefit. And it comes with an intercooler that works with a two stage turbo, which is tuned for low end torque. On paper, the figures are pretty good with the engine putting out 98.6 bhp and 24.5 kgm of torque. On the road, though, it doesn't feel that much at all, mainly because of the Quanto's heavy 1640 kg weight. The power delivery is very linear, in fact, so linear that it feels flat. The Quanto really lacks punch. In fact, I find myself very often squeezing my foot flat onto the floor of the accelerator to extract some juice out of this engine. The top end is weak and the Quanto is going to struggle out on the highway. After 3,500 RPM, power seriously tapers off. And for what it's worth, you can pull the engine to a max of about 4,600 RPM but you find yourself short shifting around 4,100 to keep it from running out of breath. Our V-Box also told us that the Quanto 0 to 100 comes up in a slow 17.41 seconds. But then this isn't really the sort of vehicle you want to take to a drag race anyway. Most Quantos will spend their life in the confines of a city and that's exactly where they feel most comfortable. The in-gear timings of the Quanto are comparable to the 84 BHP Renault Duster, making it very much the city vehicle. Power delivery, like I said, is very linear and the meat of the power is between the 1500 and 3500 RPM mark. The engine lacks the responsiveness and punch we've come to expect from the larger Mahindra engines. And though it will find itself out of depth on the highway, it's still a car that will amble well through traffic. This engine is all new, but the suspension setup is the same as the Xylo. The only difference being in tuning. The underpinnings of the Xylo are pretty obvious over here. The Quanto has inherited that top-heavy feeling that you have. And as you can see by the fact that I'm being swung to the other side of my seat, there's a considerable amount of body roll. The steering isn't too quick to react either. I did think that the smaller dimensions of the Quanto would make it more stable and better to drive, but it's still not a confidence-inspiring setup. However, to its credit, the Quanto feels light and easy to drive, which makes it an ideal city companion. The high up seating position, good visibility and tough build make you feel like you are behind the wheel of an SUV. But unlike the larger ones, it doesn't feel too bulky to drive and park. In fact, it's very convenient. Not only that, it's practical too. The outwardly small Quanto opens up a lot of space on the inside. The rear seat has a good amount of space. Nikhil is 5'11", I'm 5'4", and I've got a good amount of knee room over here. Width is also really good, so the third passenger can be comfortable. And actually really comfortable because even the floorboard is flat over here. The seat itself, I find the backrest a bit too upright. But that's because we can't recline it any further because of the third row jump seats. This window line, which is very low, close to the seat base actually, sort of opens up the back of this car, makes it nice and spacious and airy and lots of glass area in the rear here. I was actually surprised by the amount of space in the rear of the Quanto. Being a sub 4 meter, it's really packaged well to offer up this kind of room. The rear passengers also get the trays like the Xylo, but there's no rear AC vent. However, the front AC cools sufficiently enough for the middle row passengers to be comfortable. Unfortunately, it's not too easy to get too comfortable for too long at the back of the Quanto. Whilst at low speeds and within city, the ride is okay, Gain a little bit of momentum and you will need to use the grab handles provided. Even over the small undulations on this test track, I'm getting vertical movement. Now that's not a good sign because this is a pretty flat surface still. And as far as cornering is concerned, I could easily fly out of the other window if Nikhil went any faster and this grab handle is coming really in handy to keep me in place. As you can see, there's a considerable, considerable amount of body roll it really unsettles you in this back seat. 
A unique feature on the Quanto is its micro-hybrid technology that, when activated, switches the engine off over long hauls and restarts it as you depress the clutch. Whilst this feature should result in marginal improvement in fuel economy, the fact that it also switches the air conditioner off limits its use. For the record, the Quanto has an ARAI-tested fuel economy of 17.21 km per litre, which, considering its weight, is a really good number. Well, after a short time with the Quanto, we realised that the Quanto is pretty much a mixed bag. Whilst it does very well on space and economy, it loses out on performance and drive. Still, when you consider the Quanto's pricing that starts at around 5.9 lakh for the base C2 model and stretches up to about 7.7 .7 lakh for the top spec C8 variant, it looks a whole lot more interesting. The fact is, within this price range, there is only one competitor, the Premier Rio, and the Quanto outclasses it by far. It offers up a nice lifestyle alternative to the hatchbacks, it's spacious, versatile and you can't argue with the practicality of it on our kind of roads. We asked ourselves at the beginning with its compact dimensions and reduced power, will the Quanto do the job of an SUV? Well, from behind the wheel, it most definitely feels like one. You sit up high, you have great visibility, it feels big and it feels tough. And despite its compact dimensions, it actually opens up an amazing amount of space on the inside. The middle row has good amount of room, the boot has reasonable amount of space and there's even two jump seats in the rear for extra passengers. Although you can really put only kids in there, it's still a very practical vehicle. Now there's one big grouse we have with the Quanto and that's performance. It lacks punch and it will struggle out on the highway, especially if it's fully loaded. Also, it's inherited the problems of the Xylo as far as dynamics are concerned. So it's not about being a fun-to-drive SUV, it's more about being a practical runabout. It's convenient and well-suited to the city. The biggest plus point being, falling within the definition of compact, it comes with attractive pricing.